Sandman Stories presents Story number 14 in the Chinese Fables and Folk Stories by Mary Hayes Davis and Chao Leung The Boy of Perfect Disposition Okay, let's begin. About 2,420 years ago, Zhen Zi was a child and lived in Sanzi province. For 21 years, he studied many things with the great teacher Confucius, and the first great moral law of Confucius he obeyed, not only in his acts, but in his heart, even when beaten for a thing he did not understand. And it is not on record that any other man has ever done this. In earliest childhood, he always loved and reverenced his father and mother. In the morning when he arose, he went to see his parents before he would have the morning meal. One day, Tsensi's mother went away to visit his grandparents. When she left, she said, Dear son, I will return in one day. You and your father will be happy for a day without me. And he knelt and bowed his head to worship his mother at parting. The evening came and she did not return. And Tsensi could not eat food or sleep that night from anxiety for his mother. And when the maid servant called him for the morning meal, he said, No. I cannot eat food until I see my mother's face. But his father said, You must eat and go to school. I cannot eat food or study books until my mother comes, said Senzi. And word was sent his teacher who said, You are not quite wise, Senzi. If your mother should die, would you then no longer study? I hope to see you soon at school. At midday his mother came. Then he had food and went to school and studied his lessons. When he came home from school, he always went to see where his parents were before going to play. At mealtime, he would not take food until his father and mother began eating. When he met an old person on the street, he uncovered his head and stood aside respectfully to let him pass before he went on. These and all other customs of courtesy were observed and honored by Zhen Zi. At school, he studied his lessons faithfully and never left tasks unfinished. Every day he asked his teacher, have I done any wrong today? So great was his desire to know the right and to do all that he knew. One day, Zenzi's father beat him with a long kiatsa. When he got up from the floor, he came and took his father's hand and asked, Father, did I do wrong? Tell me what it was. But his father's face was red with anger and he would not explain. Zenzi went out to the schoolroom and took his music box and came again before his father's face and sat down on the floor and played and sang to him. He sang, Every father loves his son, of this all men are sure. Each child will need the stick sometimes to keep his nature pure. And he said, I read in history about many famous men who were great because they were gentle. I hope I shall be like them. History says their fathers gave them the stick when young, but the anger had not all left his father's face, and he brought him a cup of tea and said, Father, are you thirsty? Then he took his father's hand and went to the garden where the birds were singing. He put a flower on his father's breast and said, Father, do you like that? I do. All this caused Sensi's father to think, and in his heart he said, This boy is not like other children of his age. And so long as he had life, he never beat his son again. Zhen Zi became a great scholar and finished all his studies when he was only 25 years old, and he was a wise and good man. His own generation and all the generations of man that have come after him have studied about him and have wished to be as he was. The End Sandman Stories presents Story number 14 from the Chinese Fables and Folk Stories by Mary Hayes Davis and Chao Leung What the Yanzi Taught the Hunter Okay, let's begin. One day, a hunter was looking for a fox in the wilderness when suddenly he saw thousands of birds coming towards the river and he lay quite still and waited for them all to come. 
The Yanzi, or kind birds, were talking together, and the hunter listened. One asked, Is all our company here? And the leader bird said, No, little one month old and two month and Mrs. This Year are not here yet. And the leader bird said to the lookout birds, You must go after them and help them to the river before five days. Our boats are dried and ready to sail. It is growing cold, and we must all go south together. So the lookout birds flew all around the country to hunt the lost birds. They found one with a broken wing, and a little one with not enough wing feathers to fly far, and one with a wound in his leg made by a hunter, and others that were tired or very hungry. They found every missing bird, and this great family of friends were soon all together again. But while the lookout birds were seeking the lost ones from their own family, they heard another bird cry, Save me! Save me too! And they stopped and said, Who is calling? Someone must be in trouble. They flew to a lemon tree and saw a tailor bird with her leg all covered with blood. The kind bird said, Friend, how came you in such trouble? What is your name and where do you live? The tailor bird said, I live in the south province, 800 miles away. I came here to see my friends and relatives. Three of my children are with me and we are on our way home to the south. We had gone 60 miles when I asked my children to stop and rest in this lemon tree. And now, I do not even know where they are. I fear the hunter got them. I am hurt too. And I do not think I shall ever see my home again. I shall lose my life here, I fear. The Yen Zi heard all the tailor birds said. They talked together and were sorry for her who had no one to care for her, for they knew her children had been killed by the hunter. If we do not save her life, she will surely die, they said. So they asked, would you like to go with us? We know you eat different food. We live on rice and fruit and a few bugs. We do not know that you can live as we do, and we must ride on our boats many, many hours. The tailor bird answered, Yes, I will go gladly and will eat what you have and cause you no trouble. The kind birds helped the tailor bird to their company and put her in one of their boats and two or three birds fed her and cared for her until she was well. The hunter who told the story said, I have learned many things by watching and studying the habits of the kind birds. I will never kill birds again. Yi zi, meaning, in time of trouble, man should help not only his own, but others. <laughs>